Number 67, calculate the standard molar enthalpy of formation of NO gas from the following data. And then they give us two equations with their delta H values. Okay, now I can tell that this is Hess's law because I see that they give me equations with delta H values. Usually when we're doing Hess's law, it's a very distinct type of problem. Usually when you always see these equations listed out with delta H values, we're doing Hess's law. But the thing is, is that usually they give you a formula that you should be working off of. In this case, they don't. They just say calculate the standard molar enthalpy of formation of NO gas. So the thing is, we have to come up with the equation that we want. So let's do that first. I'm going to say, I want, what equation do I want? Well, it's the standard formation equation of NO gas. So formation means that I'm making a compound. Specifically, they want me to make NO gas. So I know that my products has to be NO and it has to be a gas. Now, when it's the standard enthalpy of formation, right, you're only allowed to make one mole of your product. So that's super important. The next thing is we have to find out what are the reactants. Well, if it's a formation, we are always forming from the elements. In this case, I have two different elements. So my compound NO came from the element nitrogen and it came from the element oxygen. So I know that I have an N on the left side and I know that I have plus O on the on the left side as well. But now you ask yourself the question, is nitrogen existing as a free element or is it a diatomic? Yeah, nitrogen is one of your diatomics. When nitrogen is by itself, it doesn't exist by, its, like, by itself. It's a diatomic, which means that it's N2. And ask yourself the same question for oxygen. Is oxygen just going to be O or is that one of the diatomics? Yeah, oxygen is a diatomic as well. This comes from knowing Brinkelhoff or just knowing your, I think there's seven diatomics. Um, is there? H, N, O, F, C, L, B, R, and I. So yeah, seven of them. Now I'm just going to write the states if you want to, just in case there might be different states here, but I see that here's N2, there it's just a gas. So does it really matter that we put the states? No, but I'll just say that these are gases. Okay. Now we just got a balance, right? I only want one nitrogen here. I have two nitrogens here. So I need to bring down the number because this has to stay the same. So I can multiply this by a half, right? This is our knowing our how to balance equations, which we've done so much work with, right? I think that was last chapter. And then the same thing with the oxygens. I want one. I have to keep the one here. There's two oxygens here. So I do have to multiply it by a half again. Okay. And now I think it's getting a little hairy, so I'm just going to strip away all these states because the states don't really matter. All right. Here is the formula that I want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this equation, and we're going to work from left to right, and we're going to select equations from what they gave us, depending on what we want and how much we want. So I'm going to say that this is equation number one, this guy right here, and this is equation number two. All right. So I'm working from left to right on the equation that I want. In this case, I'm only focusing on N2. Now I say to myself, how many N2s do I want and what side do I want my N2 on? In this case, I want a half, right? So I'm just going to put a half. and Maybe I'll put this in blue. I want a half N2. And I want it on the left-hand side. It's on the left-hand side of the, of the yield sign, right? It's a reactant. So now I go up to the two equations, and I say to myself, okay, which is the equation that has the N2 in it? It's the first equation. Here it is, N2. N2 does not show up on the second equation. Now let's just tally up and see what we got here. How many N2s are here? There's one, 
and it's on the left side. Okay, cool. So the sides are the same, but the numbers are not. You're always going to try to get to the number that you want. In this case, you want a half. So what would I have to do to a one to get it to a half? There's two answers here. You could say that you can you divide the whole thing by two, or you could times by a half. I think we can divide by two because I know that a lot of students don't like fractions, which is totally fine with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole equation and we're going to divide by two. So maybe I'll just say divide by two. Whoop, did I just say divide? Divide, I gotta put the number, by two. And remember, you gotta be fair. You have to divide by two by every coefficient that's in this equation. So let's start with the first one. There was one, one divided by two will get me the half. So I'm gonna put it as a half and two. Now we're moving on to the next one. Two, or two divided by two, two divided by two is just one, right? So that would be just 102. Yields, two divided by two is one, and 02. Now, you gotta be fair. If you divide by two, what do you think you have to do to the delta H? Yeah, you also have to divide this by two as well. So I'm gonna take my 66.4 and divide it by two. So that would be, what, 33.2? Okay, so now the first equation's done. Now we move on. I'm not gonna look at the N2 anymore. I go back to the equation that I want and I keep moving forward. So in this case, now I'm gonna look at the O2. So I do the same process again. I want a half O2, right? I want a half of it and I want it on the left side. Which equation out of these two has the O2 in it? Now here's the thing, guys. There's an O2 on the first equation, and there's an O2 on the second. If you see that the compound that you want or the molecule that you want is in both equations, skip it. It's too hard. We don't have time for that. But just seeing that it's in both equations, don't even pay into any mind to it. It will fix itself out in the end. But I just wanted to show you that. So instead, I won't look at this, I'll just skip over this one, and I'll go to the next compound, and the last one. Now I'm looking for an NO. Let's just say what we want. I want one NO, and I want it on the right side, right? It's on the right side of this. Which equation has the NO? Ah, it's this one now. Equation number one does not have NO. It has NO2, but it doesn't have NO. So now let's see, what's the tally here? I have two NOs, right, two, and it's on the left-hand side. Aye. Okay, so here's a little bit of a crazy one, right? The numbers aren't matching up, and the sides aren't matching up. So when your sides aren't matching up, all you have to do is you have to switch or flip the equation which means that the right-hand side will now be the left, and the left-hand side will now be the right. So you're basically just taking the equation and flipping it over on the, the yield sign. So maybe I'll do that first, because we have to do two things here. We have to flip it because we need the L to turn into an R, and then we also need to change the number. But let's just flip first, okay? So I'm just gonna flip everything so the two NO2s are now going to be on the left-hand side. So two NO2s yield these two. Two NO plus O2. Now when you flip it, what happens to the delta H, guys? When you flip an equation, the negative in this case turns into a positive. So my delta H would be a positive 114.1 .1 as of right now. So we fixed the, um, the side problem, but we still need to change the numbers. You always want to get it to the number that you want. In this case, I want one NO. So two, what are you going to do to two to get to one? Yeah, I'm also have to divide this by two as well. 
So maybe I'll say we have to switch and flip and divide by 2. So I have to take this whole equation once again and divide by 2. So now I'm just going to change the uh, coefficients here, okay? So it was a 2. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Move on to the next one. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So I'm going to get rid of that. And now 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 or a half. Okay, so I can get rid of this, but you got to be fair. If you divide this equation by 2, what's going to happen to the delta H? Yeah, you will also have to divide this number by 2. So 114.1 divided by 2. 57.05, and that's going to be my new delta H for this reaction. 57.05. And maybe I'll just, there we go, just so that I have more room. Okay, beautiful. Now, we're at the end of the rope here, right? I don't have any other um, compounds, right? And don't even go back to the O2. D just, you know, once we skip this, don't go back, okay? Now, we're just going to see if we did it correctly. So we're going to add the two together. And remember, compounds that are on opposite sides are going to be canceled out. So looky here, guys, right? If I have NO2 on the product side, and then it shows up again on the reactant side, those get canceled out. So bye-bye to that. And now let's see. Ah, something else we can cancel out as well. I have an O2 here, and I have an O2 here. They're on opposite sides, so they will cancel, but the numbers aren't the same. Right here, I have one O2. So we're going to be doing subtraction, because that's what canceling out is, but we're going to have some left over here, right? One minus a half is what? It's a half. So I can cancel this out, cancel this out, and just say that I now have one half O2 left over. And maybe, maybe I can bring this down a little bit just so that it's not conflicting with that. Okay, beautiful. Nothing else I can cancel, so now I'm ready to just write it out and see if I did it correctly. Let's see, one half and two, that's this, plus... I have the remaining one half O2 here, yields an O. And that's exactly the equation that I wanted in the beginning. So I know I did it correctly, and now all we have to do is just add up the delta H's. So it would be 33.2 plus 57.05. I get 90.25. And that's kilojoules. And there you go. That's the answer. Calculate the delta H, 90.25 or 90.3 if we round. But either way, it's, it's correct. And there you go. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate you, all right? I really hope you're doing well in your classes. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a great day. Keep studying hard. See you later. Bye-bye.